Hey everyone, welcome back to another very exciting Unity VFX particle tutorial and today we're going to be actually getting our hands dirty with a little bit of programming, so nothing too complex and you'll see here what we're going to be doing. So you can see I've just got a really simple particle uh, system here, you know, the particles are just going up, right? Just simple as that. And it's got this little particle seek component which is what we're going to be recreating in this tutorial. So if I just enable it, you can see what happens. So I've got a target and a force value, right? These are the only two exposed variables, and the target is this little attractor. So if I move the attractor around, you can see every single particle in the particle system actually moves towards the target with this sort of seeking behavior, right? So it's really simple, nothing too complex. And the reason I want to make this, because I want to start doing a few more um, complicated things, but to do that with programming, uh, I figured it'd be nice to have this little intro so that you'll be able to follow along easier later on. Also, aside from the example, in case any of you are wondering, you know, how else I could use this, well, you can see an example of this, right, where I've got the, 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 the particles, the, light, the lightning particles actually being attracted towards the mouse, so it's a combination of two of my other tutorials, which is the lightning and the mouse sparkle tutorial, and then if you combine it with this, you can get something like this, or, you know, you can get something like this as well, where you can see uh, these little things are coming out and they're spiraling towards this black hole sphere and you've got particles coming out of the mouse. So there's a lot of interesting and creative opportunities to do with this simple script if you want to go play with it more and, you know, whatnot. So, without any further delay, let's just get started. So I'm going to disable these two right now because I'm going to recreate these and I'm going to create my new particle system, right? This will be the emitter that I created before and I'll just set this up real quick so let's maybe move it here maybe like point uh, 2.5 I guess let's move it up about 1.5 so it's just centered a little bit off the left of the screen I'm gonna change this to actually nothing really uh, set the start speed to 0 set the start size to 0.15 the emission, I guess, we can increase that to 100, and just set the velocity over lifetime to be going up maybe, you know, just, yeah, 1, and it'll just head on up there. Uh, so, I think that's actually about it, right? So that's, that's all that's going on here. And next I want to create the attractor, which is, in this case, just going to be a sphere. Nothing fancy, just move it off to 2.5 units here to the right and maybe move it up 1.5 just so it's kind of aligned with this and also I don't want this to be so large so I'm actually gonna set this, I've got this new mechanical keyboard, it's a little bit hard to reach but anyways uh, so just so it's, it's smaller and easier to see and fit and we can play with that later. So we need to add a new component to this particle system so let's just go ahead and add a new component and we'll call it particle seek. Now I'm going to call it particle seek 2. You can just call it particle seek just because I already have a particle seek uh, component script here. So I'm just going to create an add. Alright, so now that we have the particle seek 2 script component, it's a completely new class. Uh, it's just got, you know, this default template set up here. So I'm going to just hit control A, control K, F to select all and then format in Visual Studio. Now we're not actually going to be using late, uh, not update, we're going to be using update because we want the entire particle simulation to be completed before we start applying our own forces, which is why we use late update. Other than that, uh, let's see what else are we going to need. We're going to need, of course, the transform target. So we'll just get a public transform, we'll call this target. And we also need a force, so we'll get a public float for the amount of force we want to apply. By default, we'll put that at 10, and we'll, because it's public, it'll be exposed in the editor, and we can allow the user to change that later. So let's just actually name this sphere target. I forgot to do that earlier, or emit or attractor, I guess. And set, just check this, I guess. You can see the target is here. We can put the attractor in there right now, and obviously if we play it, nothing's going to happen, so... Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. So, uh, what else do we need? We need, of course, the particle system, the current particle system that we're going to be working with. So we'll just create that particle system. Oops. Particle system. And we'll just call it PS so it's easier to reference in the script. And in start, we need to create a, we need to hold a reference to that particle system. So we'll do just get component 
particle system, right? So this means whatever script this is attached to, it's going to try and get a particle system component off of it. In this case, because it is attached to a game object with a particle system on it, uh, it'll automatically fill that in. If you want to check to make sure that's working, all you have to do is just go up here, hit debug, and you can see right now it's nothing. But once I hit play, it should get grab that reference and start, and it should fill up, right? So it's got that, and it's working. So going back to Unity. So what we want to first do is we need to iterate over every single particle and apply the seeking behavior to it. To do that, we need to actually grab all the particles into an array. So the way we can do that is let's just grab, let's just create a array of these type of particle systems. You have to be careful not to use this particle because that's deprecated, uses the old legacy particle system stuff. So you want to use the new shuriken stuff like this. And we'll just call it uh, particles. I guess. Equal, oh, that's a C style, sorry. So this was right the first time. Equals new, and we want this to have as many, this array to be the size of as many particles in the system, so we can just do cs.particle count. So now we've created and initialized an array with this amount of space, with this length. So now we actually need to fill this array with the appropriate particles from the system. So we can do that by using ps.getParticles right, into this array. And it'll automatically get as many particles as the array length, which in this case is the same as the number of particles in the entire system. So we'll have all the particles at this point. I'm just going to maybe drop this down for formatting because I think that looks nicer. Next, we want to actually go over every single particle. So we'll do a for loop int i equals 0. i is less than particles dot length i plus plus. So this means now we're going to be going through uh, every single particle. So I'm just going to create a reference to the current particle we're working with by doing something like particle system dot particle and I'll call it p equals oops equals particles dot i. I'm actually much faster at typing but again this is keyboard and I'm really awkwardly positioned at my desktop here, not on my laptop anymore, so it's I got a bigger screen and it's nicer. Okay, so we have the current particle and now what we want to do is get a direction to the target so we can apply it to the particle's velocity. To do that, anytime you want to get a direction vector towards anything from a current point, you take the you take the target position and you subtract it by your current position. So direction to target in this case would be target dot position minus the position of the particle. So we'll just do p dot position, right? So now we have a direction to the target. Now in this case it's scaled, so because we want a unit vector we just normalize it and we do this. So that way, because you know in this case if we didn't normalize it, the farther away the target was the more force it would automatically apply. And instead we want to normalize that to the range. Uh, we want to create a unit vector so we can multiply it by the force, right? So in this case, the seek force becomes, uh, let's get a new vector for that, actually vector 3, seek force becomes direction to target, or sorry, direction to target times the force, and then we'll also multiply that by time dot delta time, so it is frame rate independent and not dependent on frames, because every frame uh, might be a pl uh, might be slower to come out, and that way you want to get all the accumulated time between the frames, and then apply that. Right. So we have the seek force. So we can now do particle dot velocity plus equals the seek force. Right. So it's just a basic integrator. Force goes into velocity, and velocity goes into position. So now that we have that done, uh, we actually just need to assign this particle back into the array. So we can just do particles i equals P because it's uh, all you're, you're not getting the actual particle. You've got the, the values of it. And we want only want to do that, so we're not constantly referencing using this operator here. So particles i equals p. So now it's assigned back into the array. And now once we're done the entire for loop, we actually need to assign every single particle back into the system. So before we did particle system get particles, we'll do the equivalent of that for setting particles, which is particle system dot set particles. So in this case, we pass in the array that we want to set from, and then we want to get 
all the particles, right? So we do particles.length for the size, so we get every single particle. Now, this will have some problems, and I'll talk about them, but otherwise, this is pretty much done. So if we go back to Unity, and we hit play on this, and remember, we already set this up here. Just give it a little bit to it. So you can see now it's moving towards the attractor, but you can see it seems to be centered, it seems to think the attractor is right here. And that's just because this particle system is simulating in local space, not simulating in world space. If it simulates in world space, now you can see it's working correctly. So we need to auto-correct that in our script. If you don't want to do that, then at this point you're actually basically done and that's it, right? Good job. But if you do want to fix that, we need to actually modify the particle position here. Um, because when you get the particle position, and the particle system is set to simulate in local space, you get the particle position relative to its uh, right here. You don't actually get the world position, right? So you need to transform that into the world position. Now, as of Unity, I think maybe 5.3 or 4, or maybe even 5.5, .5, I don't know, they added a bunch of different things you can set, which is local, world, and custom. So we need to account for all three of those. So the way we can do that is if particle system dot or sorry, not this. We actually need to get the actual reference to the particle. So particle system dot simulation space equals local. Then we do something else if I'm gonna just copy this real quick and just change it a little bit. Otherwise, if it equals custom, then we do something else. And otherwise, if it's world, then we will just do whatever is left, right? So we need to, what's wrong with this? Oh, sorry, we need to actually, we can't use this. We need to get main, the main module, and then we need to get the simulation space like this. Okay, so there you go. So now we have access to that properly, and it's all good, up-to-date code, 5.5 .5 and all. So we need to create a new vector 3, and we call it particle world position. Okay, equals vector 3 dot... Actually, we don't need to assign it anything right now. So particle world position, in this case, would be trans... Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take the transform of this object. In this case, we could do particle system dot transform, or we could just do transform because we know the particle system is on this object anyway. So transform dot transform point. And what this will do is it'll transform the position that we pass in from local space to world space, which is exactly what we want. So we get the p dot position like so, and that's the particle world position. In the case of a custom transform, I actually haven't tested this, but I believe it would be ps.main.custom simulation space, and you can see that's a transform, so I'm assuming that's the transform you would use. You do the exact same thing, except you use that transform as the reference for transform point. And otherwise, if it's already in world space, if it's not in local or custom, then we can just take the particle position as is. So we can do particle world position equals particle dot position. I'm really sorry for those of you who are finding my uh, typing really painful. It's pretty painful for me as well. So, uh, particle world position, we can now just assign it here instead of using, you know, the p dot position, and that way it'll be correctly modified depending on whatever uh, simulation space mode we're using, and that should completed off. So actually, let me just check. This is identical to the script I created before, which is pretty neat. Okay, so if I hit play now, everything that you expected, and it'll function the exact same way as before. So you can see, even though it's in local space or in world space, it simulates the exact same way. You can change the the speed, right? So you can turn out turn down the force so the particles aren't as attracted. If you turn it back to zero, then it'll go back to what it was doing before, which is just rising up. And so here's the interesting thing. Now this is a behavior, right? So you have behaviors like flee, uh, seek, you can implement arrival if you want. Maybe I'll leave that for another tutorial, maybe I'll extend this later. Uh, but similarly, you can also turn this into flee where the particles actually run away in a, in a sense from the attractor just by negating the value. So before it was 10, you just turn it negative 10 and it actually runs away in a sense, right, from the emitter. So it'll actually go in the opposite direction instead of going towards it. And the emitter obviously doesn't have to be you know, anything. It could just be 
It doesn't have to be like this sphere thing. It could just be an empty transform. It could be a character, whatever else. So that about wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment if you have any questions, you know, suggestions, uh, if you just want to say hi or whatever else. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.